for me, the difference between teaching in a, in a blended format rather than teaching face-to-face -face is that it, it's significantly more multidimensional. That I'm able to, I've been able to, for example, in the context of this class, bring in what we're calling virtual visitors who are experts in the field who we have uh, taught through, uh, who we've spoken to via a Skype-like software, a more sophisticated Skype, which has allowed us to have experts from Montreal, from Edinburgh, from London, visit us in class. And that's something that has come to me because of my association with the Center for Pedagogical Innovation here and the fact that I'm teaching this course. And we then have captured those interviews so that they can be uh, materials for the learning in the subsequent iterations of the class. So it's, it's really broadened my thinking about what I can use as teaching resources and teaching tools. In teaching online versus teaching face-to-face, -face, something that was quite different for me was how I prepared for the course going in. Um, rather than having some ideas about where I was going and letting the lectures evolve as, as I went, which I typically do or have done in my uh, on-campus teaching, I found with the online courses that there was a much greater degree of planning. Um, with the massive open online course, we essentially had the course complete before we ever engaged with a student. So it was mostly in the can um, before before any students started engaging with the material. So having the course planned and that lack of flexibility to respond to students' questions and concerns or in a, in a significant way to really adjust what we were going to do going forward was quite a difference. When people compare online teaching to face-to-face -face teaching, they often, in my mind, actually over-exaggerate the difference. They'll say things like, there's an intimacy in a face-to-face -face setting that you can't get in an online setting. And I, I immediately think of the Match.coms and the, you know, all the ways in which uh, people are meeting each other and having really deep personal relationships online. So I don't accept some of the exaggerated differences. But it is a different medium, and it, it does push you to think um, in a different way. You cannot be quite as back and forth. Now, you can't be quite as back and forth in the modern 500-seat lecture hall either. Um, but you do really have to think about how to engage, how to somehow um, bring in the student body and make them feel warm and connected and fuzzy when you're not all sitting in the same room. Uh, and that's certainly not impossible, but it does push us to think in creative ways and pushes us to come up with new techniques. There's lots of differences between teaching online and teaching face-to-face. -face. Um, for me, the biggest thing when teaching online is that I try to use many of the principles that, that have always guided my teaching. So I try to make sure that the students have space to talk uh, in their own voice. I try to f figure out ways that the students can be engaged with the material so that there's the development of a, of a learning community. And so in a face-to-face -face classroom, that's, that's fairly easy because everybody's sharing the same space. Um, everybody has the exact same experience of coming in. They sit in the same uh, chair every week. Um, and, and they get to know one another in a, in a very sort of uh, in, in an intimate way, I guess, w within a classroom. So I try to, when I'm teaching online, I try to, to take those principles and, and as much as possible uh, translate them to the online environment. So it's challenging in the sense that um, in some ways uh, the, the sort of anonymity of, of online allows students a, a sense of freedom to um, maybe say things that they wouldn't say within the classroom. So that there's benefits and drawbacks to that um, in the sense that uh, students are less inhibited in terms of maybe, uh, you know, expressing extreme opinions uh, in the online environment. Um, but at the same time, th what I've found is that students who I know are a little reticent to speak with, within a within a face-to-face -face classroom are some of the biggest contributors to the online environment, which is which is really great. Well, there are many differences. The first one would be that I don't have to be on the stage. So I can re-record my lectures until almost perfect. I can also revisit the content of my own lectures to answer questions. So they're more directly uh, related to the student experience. Also, the course can run even though I'm away on a conference or if my children are sick, for instance. So that's a big advantage. But um, for me, it was an awakening 
um, it was a, almost a pedagogical epiphany, I had to re rethink my role, my role as a teacher, uh, my role as a thinker, uh, in a very humbling manner. Uh, it was about making sense of all the information that's already available online, helping the student uh, in organizing the, the findings, um, making sense of what's out there. So organize a meaning-making system for the student. Um, and that's very humbling because the information is already there in a variety of forms. I love teaching in both environments uh, because of their unique challenges and opportunities because you can do some fantastic things in both environments. Um, one of my own observations when I, I was teaching face-to-face -face is that um, I'm a talker. I like to uh, engage learners with on-the-fly kinds of conversations. I can prompt uh, a classroom conversation based off uh, some fascinating research that's done in dinosaurs, for example. Um, and I can get grasp almost immediately. And I think educators have this, this, this skill, is they can sense when students are not understanding something and they can and they can adapt on the fly literally as the class is taking place um, the types of conversations uh, off-the-cuff conversations that can take place in a, a classroom there's an energy there um, and it's 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 really real and I I feed off of that um, and you get this, this to learn about the people in your classroom in ways that I would say are different um, and you can build uh, interesting, you know, uh, student-teacher relationships because you you recognize those people, uh, and we we tend to associate very clearly with who that person is and what they're bringing into the classroom in a face-to-face -face environment. Things are a little bit different online. Um, I I don't lecture online. Um, it's a facilitation role. Um, the, the modules and lessons that are designed have all been planned in advance. Uh, the engagement, therefore, is a little bit different. Uh, there's a little bit more of a separation. The learners are primarily engaging with the material and the activities that um, I've designed or have, uh, I've worked in conjunction with a team to design. And so there's a little bit of a separation. And that means that the, the activities can be really, really, really good. But I don't necessarily have that immediate feedback when each individual learner is not learning uh, a particular content area. I need to dig a little bit deeper. I need to probe some more. And so that's a challenge, right? I, I like that because there's, there's all kinds of techniques that you can do that uh, to do. The other aspect, um, because students are interacting with the content, it takes a little bit of a shift uh, and change, right? Uh, and that means control. In a classroom, the, the control aspect of, uh, of being in control is something that I have to work to relinquish. In an online setting, right away, uh, by design, because it's more student-centered, um, I know I'm reaching my students in a more per personal and meaningful way, and that I find that very satisfying.